In all the videos, we have concentrated on New South Wales. From its inception to about the middle of the 19th century, the colony extended from Cape York down to Port Melbourne. But we mustn't forget Adelaide and Perth, although the latter developed later and after the settlement was established further to the south of Perth near Albany. I'm Michael Bishel, Australian historical fiction writer here again. Let's just now look at, at a poignant story of a woman's struggle in the west of this great Australia. We will see that the misfortune that she had to endure was bad enough, even if it was experienced today if she had the same challenges today, but wind the clock back nearly 200 years and in a hostile, primitive, lonely environment, those misfortunes she sustained must have been horrendous. This is a true story and it's a wonderful story, very sad. According to the Western Australian Historical Society, in 1831, there were settlements of gentlemen, families and servants, and one of those was Captain John Molloy and his wife Georgiana. Now Molloy was a Waterloo veteran like many of the important settlers to come to New South Wales. They were married in 1829 and Molloy was friends with James Stirling who was a significant pioneer and established establishment person of Western Australia. Stirling encouraged Molloy to go to Western Australia but let's just pause for a moment. Now the Molloys left on October the 21st, 1829, and Sydney in those days was just starting to resemble in part something of an English town. Governor Macquarie had been gone eight years and it was still in the latter part of the early colonial period. Western Australia, on the other hand, was very much still like Dirk Hartog, the Dutch explorer, found it in the 17th century. Fly-blown, dry, arid, pretty, or pretty ordinary according to the Dutchman. So the courage, the fortitude, the foresight of this couple, and like many other couples of that kind, have to be commended. When they arrived in Cockburn Sound in March 1830, they couldn't find the land they were looking for, and they went further south to Cape Lewin. Now, under canvas, no hut, no, no beautiful big uh, house, and during a heavy shower, with the servant holding a protective covering over her, Georgiana Molloy gave birth to her first child. Now the child died soon after, sadly, and un unlike today where, where women have at least friends if not formal support groups to help them through their grief, Georgiana only had her husband. Yes, it can be said that infant mortality was very high, but that's a cold statistic, which gave no comfort for the loss. Soon thereafter, pregnant again, she lost her next son. In years to come, when Aboriginals threatened her succeeding children, she did not give up to despair and made a copy of the English countryside with its windowed piano and her garden. Even though she was surrounded by wilderness, she had an optimistic view for the beauty in nature and saw in everything as God's work in creation. She moved to Vass in 1839 and still seeking female companionship, she wrote a letter to the woman she loved in Scotland. And she died in April 1843 in agony from rheumatism. So a glimpse into the struggles of a courageous woman one of many who supported their husbands in trying to eke out a future and livelihood in a place far removed from their native England. As if we today were asked to go and colonise the moon. That's bye from me, Michael Bishel. See you next time.